Hey guys, my name is Aislinn and welcome to my channel. And today for my first video, I thought I would talk about Korean dramas. Korean dramas have become popular worldwide throughout the years. And I thought since I love Korean dramas, I would do like a beginner's guide to people who may not know about Korean dramas or want to know more about Korean dramas. So I give you guys a tip on how to keep up with Korean dramas and also top 10 recommendations of dramas to start with as a full-fledged beginner. So first I'll give you guys a tip on how to keep up with Korean dramas. And the first tip is to go on this really good website. And this website is called mydramalist.com. MyDramaList.com is a great website for you guys to use in anything Asian content, Asian dramas, from Korean dramas, from Jap Japanese dramas, from Chinese dramas, and Thai dramas. So this is the website, and this is just the front page, and it gives you guys daily news of what's going on, and it changes daily so they can keep up on what's going on in Seoul right here. And then also you get to explore many different shows, movies, and actors if you want you guys want to know anything about them. And then you also have the community as well. And then here, for you guys to keep up with dramas and keep a log of them, you guys have these tabs here. And you go to my watch list. And with my watch list, you can, I mean, it pretty much goes from there. You have currently watching dramas. The completed dramas that you have finished watching and then also plan to watch and on hold and also drop drop dramas as well because you can pretty much put all the dramas you have dropped ones that you didn't like or ones that you didn't find interesting because there, there are some dramas that i really couldn't keep up with but i don't have it on that tab there but and that's pretty much and basically afterwards you can also put a score here this is like a star you can put based on if you really like that drama and this is the progress of my currently watched dramas for example this has a total of 12 dramas and i'm currently on episode 8 so you guys can do that as well right here and all you have to do is you pretty much search the drama that you want to watch for example here And then, for example, if this is the drama you want to watch, you just click on the little plus sign and then you plan to watch. And with that, you just submit it into the system and it should be in your watch list. And that pretty much goes from there. And I also want to show you guys some the top shows, top movies, top shows and top movies as well. And with that, you get to put in your own reviews as well. And these in the top movies and top shows are based on people's reviews and recommendations, basically. And for example, Move to Heaven, you just click on here and you get to see what the drama is about, the episode guide, cast and crew, and also reviews. And if you want to know reviews, you get to click on it here. These are the reviews. And right here you get to see what are they they're talking about, how good the drama is, and you also get to write a review about the drama. So there's a lot of things you can do with this, this website. It's a really good website for you guys to, to do as well. And that is mydramalist.com. Okay, so this is my top 10 Korean recommendations. And the first one I'm going to start with 20 again. So 20 again is about a young woman at the age of 19 gives up her dreams of going to college and being a dancer after getting pregnant. Years later, at the age of 38, decides to go back to college to follow her dreams. These are the different characters. We have Hanura, Kimucha, Kimunsu, Chahansuk, Kim Yujin, and Ryunyo. So Hanura, this is the main character in At a Young Age. She used to love dancing and she really wanted to go to college to become a dancer and that would be her major but she ended up meeting kim wocho at a young age and she ended up getting pregnant and ended up having their son kim Unsu, and they ended up getting married years later they end up getting a divorce within the first episode and things start to change and she feels like she hasn't been able to live for herself so she basically decides to do things for herself, go back to college and have that college life and experience that feeling that she wasn't able to when she was younger. 
And then we have Chan Hyun Suk. Chan Hyun Suk used to be um, Han Udo's childhood friend, and they really bonded with each other, but then they cut ties. So he was pretty much really in his feelings about that, and they hadn't really spoken for years. And she ends up meeting him back at college where he is her professor. And then we also have Kim Hyun Jin. Kim Hyun Jin is pretty much the, you know, the mistress, the side piece of Kim Woo Cho, because you know before they got divorced, you know they used to meet up or whatever, because they are both professors at the college that she ends up going to. And of course we have their son. Their son is also a college student at the same college as well. And this is her friend Ryan Young, Young that helps her out with that. And it is a really, really good slice of life drama. It's a really good romantic comedy, um, slice of life drama. And I really love this drama because it pretty much gives you that second chance at life. It reminds you that even though things that have happened for you at first, you were able to do things you never done before, do things that you wanted to do that you regret doing. And it's okay to do that. And I just really, really love this drama. It was a really good drama. Um, and this is actually my very first drama that I ever watched, and that's what got me into really loving Korean dramas. The antics of it, the comedy of it, the just the romance of the drama, and it was a really good, it's a really good slice of drama. I think you would like something easy to watch. That's a good one. Next we have Boys Over Flowers. So Boys Over Flower is a young girl ends up going to a prestigious rich school after saving a student from harm. She is then targeted by the FF4 boys, the most popular boys in school. The leader of the FF4 takes a liking to her and a romance starts to blossom. And these are the characters. So we have the FF4 boys here. We got Kung Jun Pyu, So Yin Jong, Yoon Ji Hoo, and Song Woo Bin. And of course, we have the main character, Kim Jun Di, right here, and then her best friend, Chu Ka Yu. So, this drama is a really, really classic drama. It came out in early 2005, and it's actually a manga. It first came out as a manga, and then they did actually did a live action version, a live Japanese version first, before the Korean version. So, it's like a pretty much a remake from the Japanese version. And I have to say it was like a little off-putting because of the quality of it, but it made up for it for its like like classical over-the-top antics. Um, so basically we have the main character Gum Jundi, and she is from a poor family who runs a cleaning shop. Um, and so she ends up meeting F04 when she is transferred to the school from this rich school because of a certain accident that happens. And pretty much the F04 you know, targets her and she's targeted by the F4. And that's how it pretty much their relationship gets started. And the leader at the F4, Gunter Pio, starts to really harass her to the point where he starts to fall in love with her and they start to fall in love with each other. And basically we also have Yunju Hu. Yunju Hu is like the second male lead who has starts to have a crush on her as well. So it's sort of like this triangle that started to go on with each other with that. Um, and you pretty much throughout the story get to know their life, get to know the FF4's lives and what they went through, even as a rich Harris, as a rich um, schoolboy and in their families, because, you know, they, you, you might be rich, but they also have problems, too. And of course, you know, we have So Yoon Jung, So Yoon Jung, he had this little side story and they started the Chong Gil's best friend started pretty much bonding with So Young Jung, but they really didn't have like that really, really like deep relationship, I, I should say. But they really did bond as like friends, and she really helped him with all the things that he was going through. And this homeboy right here, So Bin, I. I don't know. This homeboy, he really didn't have anything going on. I can't really remember what was going on with him i don't think he really had like a side story i should say he was pretty much there when everybody else was there although you know when things go down he was there like at their little side piece a side piece jesus i don't know but he really didn't have I, I could be wrong because i haven't watched this drama in forever but he really didn't have anything going on but he was still part of a fur group um and this drama is just a really good classic drama and it, it might seem a little off-putting at first because how how 
how old it is. And over over the years, a lot of dramas have pretty much advanced in like the acting and the quality, of course. But honestly, this is just a really good, fun drama to watch. And, you know, you start to really understand all the different characters. You start to root for them. You start to root for Gim Jin Di and Gun Jin Pyu, especially when the family starts to push them away because of her background, because of that poor slash rich boy background, of course. And, you know, it's just a really good classic drama of, you know, of teenagers pretty much. So I think you guys will like this as well as a beginner. All right, we have Kill Me, Heal Me. As a young child growing up, Cha Dun Hyun suffers from traumatic events, which causes him to have multiple personality disorder. Trying to gain control of his life, he meets a first year psychiatrist, Orijin. A love starts to blossom. All right, so we have the different characters, of course. We have Orijin, who is the psych first year psychiatrist at the hospital. And then we have Cha Dun Hyun. He is the main host of all of the different personalities, and he has seven personalities. So first we have Shinsuke. Shinsuke is pretty much the bad boy, like the big bad boy personality of Cha Dun Hyun because he's the opposite of Cha Dun Hyun, of course, because Cha Dun Hyun is more reserved and um, sort of like this nice side that he has. And Shin Seki is sort of his bad boy side. And pretty much Shin Seki comes out when Cha Dun Hyun can't deal with certain situations, especially when it's something violent. Shin Seki helps him deal with that. Um, and he starts to, he has always liked origin. And basically, Orijin ends up meeting Shinseki first before he meets Cha Dun She ends up meeting his personality first, and so they start to bond at first at the beginning of the show. And Shinseki tries to find ways to be the main host instead of Cha Dun Hyun. Um, so he starts to pretty much threaten the people around him to try to figure out a way to pretty much sort of kill Cha Dun Hyun so that he could be the main host and so that he can not be a sort of like a side piece of Cha Dun Hyun. And then we also have Perry Park. Perry Park is another personality, and he is pretty much the Ajashi of Cha Dun Hyun's personality. He is like obsessed with like bombs. He always have these. He always likes to create his own bombs. And then he also is obsessed with drinking. He's a drinker. He likes a little alcohol, and he's a lot older, and just he's sort of like the fun type of Ajashi um, type person. And then we have Nana. Nana is like sort of like this little child or like teddy bear I think I remember she didn't have like a big personality we really didn't see her that much it's like she would just pop up from time to time in certain situations when Cha Dae Hyun really had some type of like anxiety going on within him and we have Yuna Yuna was like my favorite character she is considered a 17 year old girl who is obsessed with you know, boys and idols, pretty much. She's really obsessed with just trying to, you know, have that teenage life. Um, and then we have Yosub. Yosub is Yuna's twin brother. And he pops out when Cha Dae is very stressed out. And he only appears, you know, because Yosub is obsessed with suicide. He's obsessed with trying to find ways to kill himself. So, you know, that, that can be really scary. And Cha Dae really can't control control himself when the side characters come out and he has no idea what's going to happen so pretty much you know they're living his life and Yosef tries to find ways to like in his life and everything and then Mr. X Mr. X really didn't come out that much he only came out maybe like at the end of the episode so you really don't know a lot about him but he is part of the different characters and of course, I'm going to go back to Origin. Origin is the key piece of all different personalities. She is a first year psychiatrist. And at first, you know, she pretty much doesn't really know a lot about multiple personality disorder. And so she starts to really try to learn how to deal with it um, because she she's pretty much a key point of everything. They start to really bond Cha Ji Hyun and Origin. And once you get to know the story, you can see why she's a key point person to the personalities because she's connected since they were kids but of course they don't know that at first so I don't want to reveal a lot but this is a really good you know 
reveal type of show that goes back from when they were kids to when they're adults. And then we also have the side characters. We have Orion. Um, Orion is Origen's twin brother, and he is a novelist, but he keeps his identity a secret. He goes by a pen name. And so he had he does like a lot of like mystery books and everything. He's sort of like this lovable type of guy. And people don't really take him seriously, but he's a really smart person. He is a novelist and he is really popular. But of course, nobody really knows because he has his he keeps his identity a secret. And then things start to get complicated because he starts to investigate charting him and within his life because he's been wanting to try to write another book. And so he starts to really invest, investigate his life and to make a book out of him about his life. And then we have this homegirl right here. We have Han Chan. Han Chan is pretty much charting Hyun's, um past crush. Chao Dehun really had a crush on Ha Chien, but it really cannot work out because um, on some situations, you know, how crushes goes, you know, he sort of kept it a secret and everything. Um, and then I can say that we have Chaki Jun, Chaki, Chaki Jun, I think I'm saying his name right. Um, but Chaki Jun is Chao Dehun's cousin and he's sort of part of that family. And so he pretty much I don't know. He he wasn't all that. I should say he wasn't all that to deal with. And pretty much, I mean, Chai, um, Chaki Jun pretty much tried to tip the tip the balance with what Chai Hyun was dealing with because he is part. He works at the same company, um, and he is over Chai Hyun. He sort of tries to keep him in check, you know, because he's part of the family business and he wants to become a leader of the family business and try to find ways to observe him. It's like this big whole thing, but, you know, he wasn't all that. And basically he is married to Han Chaeyun. And so he sort of like tries to rub in his face like, OK, this is my girl. You know, I know you had a crush on her, but she's mine now. You know, you can't take her and all that mess or whatever. But we have that character. And I'm going to go to this one, the secretary, An Kuk. He is Cha Hyun's secretary, and he is pretty much the only one who knows about Cha Hyun's disorder. And he pretty much is there to support him, to support, you know, Cha Hyun and support the family business, um, because Cha Hyun pretty much has to keep his multiple, to keep it to keep his personality a secret from his family because his family is like this big deal, you know, big deal family that does with a lot of business. And so he doesn't want that to get out uh, because he feels like that's a weakness and he doesn't want that weakness to get, get out to everybody else because some people will use that against him. So he has to keep that a secret. And then we have this homegirl right here is Chai Hyun's mother and his mother was a whole bag of chips a mess pretty much. Um, because she honestly only really cared about his title, only tried his title, the money, so that, you know, she can be kept where she was at. You know, she really didn't care of him as like a son, as a person. She only cared about his title to make sure he would be the CEO of the whole company. And then we have Chad Hyun's grandmother. She's a real G. She's amazing. Um, uh, but she's sort of like, I should say, a little bit of like the villain, I should say because um, she is like the CEO of the company right now because her son, Chai Hyun's father, is bedridden. So she had to take over the company. So she tries to keep everything in check to make every sure everything is perfect because she's waiting for her son to wake up. And she has high hopes for that. But of course, you know, she has to make sure everything is still in place. Um, and so she sort of like tries to keep Chai Hyun in check and make watch over him so that the company won't go down because she's still waiting for her, her son to wake up. But overall, this is a really, really good drama. This is like actually one of my favorite dramas out of the 10 dramas that I'm recommending to you guys, because this is this is a really like mystery. It's like it's suspenseful, intense, a real mystery. And it's also a really good comedy. And you'll start to realize what goes in the story starts to unravel piece by piece. And it's, it's, it's an amazing drama. I, I really recommend this to you guys. If you guys want like some really good action packed scenes, some really heartfelt scenes, some romantic scenes, some laughable scenes. It has all that in there, like in a bag of chips. It's full of that, you know, all that flavor, all that spice. Um, 
and you get to start to really love like the different side the different personality characters as well you get to love them you get to know about their story they they cuz they're all their own person even though they're personalities of childhood they're all their own persons and they also have dealt with things as well and you get to realize that so it's a really good drama to really understand each character and their development it's it's just such a beautiful drama and the soundtrack is amazing and i think you guys will like this one as well Next is Coffee Prince. Coffee Prince is about a young woman, the breadwinner of the family, who was often mistaken as a guy. She meets Cho Han Gyul, whose family runs a famous coffee business. Cho Han Gyul, without knowing that she is a girl, decides to hire her because he only hires male employees to attract female customers. She decides to keep her gender a secret to make ends meet and make some quick cash. So Coffee Prince is another good classic slice of life drama. I believe it came out in 2007. I believe so. I have to go back and check, but this one is a really good drama. It came around the same time around Boys with Flowers, and it was a really popular drama during that time. So we have the characters right here. We have Cho Han Gyul. Cho Han Gyul is the main male lead, and he has recently come back to Korea. He was in the States for a while and basically he his family runs this coffee coffee business um and pretty much their grandmother wants him to go on all these blind dates and he ends up meeting Goan Chan. Goan Chan is the breadwinner of the family and she is pretty much labeled a tomboy because she doesn't cater to her appearance she just you know dresses you know with the hoodies and you know the baggy pants or whatever so she's pretty much just you know that tomboy girl and people mistake her as a guy um and she ends up meeting Cho Han Gyul and Cho Han Gyul doesn't know that she's actually a girl so she so he pretty much you know does a deal with her saying like hey uh, I need you to pretend you know to be my date so I, that I can get rid of all these blind dates because he he doesn't want to be in a serious relationship right now. So he pretty much, she teams up and then, you know, Guan Chan wants to make some quick cash. So he's like, all right, I'll do it. And so they have this sort of bond with each other. And so he pretty much, you know, Chan Anga goes on all these blind dates, ends up getting with Guan Chan in the end. And so all these blind dates thinks he's like gay pretty much because, you know, they think Guan Chan is a guy. Um, and then eventually, so with that, the his grandmother decides to make him run this coffee shop because of all the, you know, antics he has been going on because he's labeled as a playboy now, you know, going on, going around with going Chan with this, you know, with a guy. So he was like, OK, I need you to chill and run this coffee shop and I'll keep an eye on you. So basically, he ends up hiring male employees only to attract female customers. And then we, these are the three male employees. We have Jin Harim, who is going, pretty much Chuan Gil's best friend. And then we have um, Kim Jae Wook and No Sung Ki. And he also ends up hiring Go and Chan. And that's how they end up um, bonding even more when they start to um, pretty much work at the same coffee shop. And then we also have Choi Han Sung. Choi Han Sung is actually Cho Han Gyo's cousin. And um, he has his own story as well with Han Yu Ju because Cho Han Sung and Han Yu Ju used to date, he used to date his homegirl right here. Um, but they broke up a long time ago because of this whole situation. And actually, Cho Han Gyo used to have a crush on Han Yu Ju. So it was like this big triangle for years that they have between each other and then she ends up coming back in town but Cho Han Sung's not having it he's like okay you don't dump me you don't put me to the side anybody have you right now so that situation is going on um but yeah that's how the story goes you know they start to work at this coffee shop together and of course Cho Han Gyul starts to pretty much have this crush on Go Han Chan throughout the episodes and he, of course he still doesn't know that about her gender and so at first he's sort of like sort of like hesitant to deal with his feelings because okay you know am i am i really feeling feelings for this guy 
or what's going on with me. And that's what I really like about this drama. He liked her for her, even though he didn't know about, you know, her gender. He just had those feelings and he just ran with those feelings alone without looking at her gender. And that's what I really like about this drama because of those things. And then Go On Chan, um, you know, was still keeping a secret about her being a girl because she wants to keep her job. So he, she started to harbor feelings as well, but she was afraid that, you know, he wouldn't like her for her as a girl. So it's like this big thing that was going back and forth, but it's just a really nice, just sweet drama. And I think you guys will like it. Um, it's just it's just really nice and just sweet and funny and you will really start to like all these different characters as well so i think you guys will like that okay so we have who are you school 2015. it is centered around two twins gon Buell and lee and without knowing that the other exists they both live different lives and lives with her mom and mb lives at the orphanage where she continues to get bullied by her classmates one day, Umbira disappears and Eunbi ends up in an accident. Eunbi ends up losing her memories and ends up taking her sister's place. Okay, so these are the pretty much the four main characters that you guys should focus on. There are other characters in the story, but I decided to focus on these four characters. We have Lambi and Gombio. She plays both twin sisters. We have Kote Guan. Uh, we have Haiyan and Kang Seong. So basically, Lee and B um, pretty much lives in an orphanage with other kids and goes to the same school that Kang Seong went to. And she pretty much, Kang Seong, this homegirl right here, just kept on messing with her and ends up bullying her. And Go and Buell is ends up getting adopted because they end up at different orphanages, basically. And they she ends up getting adopted and living with the uh, her mom who adopted her. And so something happens and Lee and B ends up in an accident the same day. Gyeong Byul ends up disappearing for some reason. And it's like a mistaken identity. And people think that Lee and B is Gyeong Byul because they have no idea about her, you know, the whole twin sister thing. So that's how the story unfolds. And of course, Lee and B ends up losing her memory. So she has no idea who she is. And she ends up living with Gyeong Byul's mother. And so it's sort of about recovering her memories and dealing with what she went through. And we also, and Kote Guan ends up helping her out. And it's like this big whole thing. I don't want to reveal so, so much, but this is a really good like school-based drama, you know, that deals with like a lot of teen drama with bullying and um, school-based stuff. Um, and it's, it's just a really good way to learn about what happens with teens and what people go through because it's really good drama because it's, it's dealing with things that we went through as teens or what teens are dealing with now with bullying and grades and trying to always, you know, um, always be good, you know, and to show your grades and everything. So, but yeah, it starts, everything starts to unravel, especially when Lee and B starts to pretty much recover her memories, because over time she starts to recover her memories and things starts to end, end up getting even more complicated when Kang Seung ends up coming to the same, it's like this whole thing, coming to the same school with her. It's like this pickle thing, because um, I don't know, she, for some reason, was so trying to get with Lee and B slash go on Bill. Like, it was just, it was ridiculous how messed up she was in trying to get her like she was trying to mess with her the whole time and it was just ridiculous but over time it like reminds you that there are certain ways you know you know how to deal with bullies and how to deal with certain situations in school and that's what I really like about this drama because it makes you learn different things in what people go through that's what we like about this drama. So this is a really good slice of life teen drama. There's a lot of mystery and it's it's really intense for a school-based drama, I have to say, especially when it comes to revealing yourselves with their identity and what's going on in the school with bullying and the teachers have no idea or they just trying to turn their backs on it. It's like this big whole thing. But yes, this is a really good base drama. So and with that, if you guys want to know more about the dramas that I have, you guys will go to part two for my next 
edition of Dramas for Beginners.